Hello everyone, Miss Mullen here. I'm so excited to read you one of my favorite books written for kids. This is The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate. It was published in 2012. Um, and you can see that it has a big gold medal on it. That medal was um, is the, called the Newberry Medal. And it was given to uh, this book that year because it was considered the best book of fiction written for children um, that year. It is given by the American Library Association every single year. They award it to a different book. Um, and this year that, that it won, I was so excited because I love this book. It's really fantastic. Uh, it's fiction, but it is based on a real story about a real gorilla named Ivan who was born in captivity. He was raised in a human home for the first few years of his life. And then he spent over 30 years living at this really sad little shopping mall off the side of a highway. After Catherine Applegate wrote The One and Only Ivan, she also published this book. And this is called Ivan, The Remarkable True Story of the Shopping Mall Gorilla. This book is about the real Ivan. So if you're curious to know what happened to the real Ivan, um, after you, we read the one and only Ivan, I, I may read that one as part of our read alouds as well. So this is Ivan, he's our library Ivan. He's excited to sit with me and listen to the one and only Ivan. Um, Ivan is a gorilla. Gorillas are great apes. They're primates. Um, other great apes include chimpanzees or chimps, uh, bonobos, orangutans, and actually people. Um, we are not monkeys, so great apes are not monkeys, but there are some smaller apes too, like siamang and gibbons. But even gibbons are a little bigger than a, a monkey. Monkeys are also primates, but they're a little different. Uh, they usually have a tail, whereas great, um, apes do not have a tail. Apes usually have a bigger brain uh, to their body ratio, so they tend to be, I don't want to use the word smarter, because monkeys are pretty smart too, but um, they're just a little, their brain is bigger, let's just put it that way. Um, well, so I know there's other differences between monkeys and, um, and apes. Often apes are called uh, monkeys though, and I hear people even calling our Ivan a monkey, and I want to say he's an ape. Okay, anyway, he likes to be called an ape. Um, gorillas are very gentle creatures. They are huge. Uh, an adult silverback gorilla can weigh about 400 pounds, which is a lot more than an adult human can weigh, right? But um, gorillas do not throw their weight around in that sense. They are not violent animals. Um, of course, you would want, not want to provoke one because especially a, an adult silverback male will try to protect his family, but he isn't gonna be violent for no reason. Uh, they tend to be very gentle animals, actually. All right, that's enough background. Let's read The One and Only Ivan. I'm so excited. The chapters are really short in this book and they're not labeled as chapter one, chapter two. They have titles. So instead of saying chapter one, I'll just say, I'll just say the title. Here's the first page. There's a picture of Ivan. Let's look closely. The first chapter is called Hello. I am Ivan. I'm a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. Names. People call me the freeway gorilla, the ape at exit eight, the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. The names are mine, but they are not me. I am Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. Humans waste words. They toss them like banana peels and leave them to rot. Everyone knows the peels are the best part. I suppose you think gorillas can't understand you. Of course, you also probably think we can't walk upright. Try knuckle walking for an hour and you tell me which way is more fun. I forgot to mention that gorillas, when they walk, they walk on their knuckles. Patience. I've learned to understand human words over the years, but understanding human speech 
is not the same as understanding humans. Humans speak too much. They chatter like chimps, crowding the world with their noise, even when they have nothing to say. It took me some time to recognize all those human sounds, to weave words into things, but I was patient. Patient is a useful way to be when you're an ape. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. How I look. I used to be a wild gorilla and I still look the part. I have a gorilla's shy gaze, a gorilla's sly smile. I wear a snowy saddle of fur, the uniform of a silverback. A silverback, boys and girls, is the male, adult male gorilla, is known as a silverback. When the sun warms my back, I cast a gorilla's majestic shadow. In my size, humans see a test of themselves. They hear fighting words on the wind. When all I'm thinking of is how late the late day sun reminds me of a ripe nectarine. I'm mightier than any human, 400 pounds of pure power. My body looks made for battle. My arms outstretched span taller than the tallest human. My family tree spreads wide as well. I'm a great ape, and you are a great ape, and so are chimpanzees and orangutans and bonobos, all of us distant and distrustful cousins. I know this is troubling. I too find it hard to believe there's a connection across time and space, linking me to a race of ill-mannered clowns. Chimps, there's no excuse for them. Okay, let's see. I think we can read the next chapter and then we'll stop. The next chapter is called The Exit 8 Big Top Mall in Video Arcade. I live in a human habitat called the Exit 8 Big Top Mall in Video Arcade. We are conveniently located off I-95 with shows at 2, 4, 7, and 7 o'clock, 365 days a year. Mac says that when he answers the trilling telephone. Mac works here at the mall. He is the boss. I work here too. I am the gorilla. At the Big Top Mall, a creaky music carousel spins all day and monkeys and parrots live amid the merchants. In the middle of the mall is a ring with benches where humans can sit on their rumps while they eat soft pretzels. The floor is covered with sawdust made of dead trees. My domain is at one end of the ring. I live here because I am too much gorilla and not enough human. Stella's domain is next to mine. Stella is an elephant. She and Bob, who is a dog, are my dearest friends. At present, I do not have any gorilla friends. My domain is made of thick glass and rusty metal and rough cement. Stella's domain is made of metal bars. Stella's, I'm sorry, the sun bear's domain is wood. The parrot's is wire mesh. Three of my walls are glass. One of them is cracked and a small piece about the size of my hand is missing from its bottom corner. I made the hole with a baseball bat Matt gave me for my sixth birthday. After that, he took the bat away, but he let me keep the baseball that came with it. A jungle scene is painted on one of my domain walls. It has a waterfall without water and flowers without scent and trees without roots. I didn't paint it, but I enjoy the way the shapes flow across my wall even if it isn't much of a jungle. I am lucky my domain has three windowed walls. I can see the whole mall and a bit of the world beyond. The frantic pinball machines and the pink billows of cotton candy, and the vast and treeless parking lot. Beyond the lot is a freeway where cars stampede without end. A giant sign at its edge beckons them to stop and rest like the gazelles, like gazelles in a watering hole. 
The sign is faded, the color is bleeding, but I know what it says. Max reads its words aloud one day. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. Sadly, I cannot read, even though I wish I could. Reading stories would make a fine way to fill my empty hours. However, once however, I was able to enjoy a book left in my domain by one of my keepers. It tasted like termite. The freeway billboard has a drawing of Mac in his clown clothes and Stella on her hind legs and an angry animal with fierce eyes and unkempt hair. The animal is supposed to be me, but the artist made a mistake. I am never angry. And I'm gonna show you that picture that some of the pictures some of the pages have pictures. Do you see that? That angry looking animal is supposed to be Ivan. He says, I'm never that angry. Anger is precious. A silverback uses anger to maintain order and warn his troop of danger. When my father beat his chest, it was to say, beware, listen, I am in charge. I am angry to protect you because that is what I was born to do. Here in my domain, there is no one to protect. And we're gonna stop there, boys and girls. I will continue reading this um, very soon. I'll read the next couple of chapters and we'll do this as often as we can until we get this, until we finish this book. And I look forward to hearing what you think about it. Until next time.